Joanna. If you are new to me, welcome. I hope you stay. My intention is very simple. It is to provide information, to channel higher frequency information to help you become more aware. Why would that be more? Why would that be important? The more you are aware of your true self, the more you begin to embody your own true power. And I have not met a person yet in my, on my journey, especially the last 20 plus years or so, doing a lot of deep inner work, spiritual work, where someone would say, I am not interested in feeling more empowered. It simply doesn't exist. And the reason why is because we are naturally born, let me rephrase, we are naturally in our most natural state, our divine state, are essentially nothing but powerful. Then we embody a physical body and through our lives experiences, we essentially forget that we are powerful beings and having the veil of forgetfulness that we are immensely powerful beings also doesn't help. We begin to think, feel, believe that we are not powerful. And I am not talking about the type of power where someone who is insecure says, I am very powerful. <clears throat> that is not the type of power I'm talking about. I'm talking about our true innate, inherent power that each and everyone has. So long story short, my intention is to help you embody more of that. And if this is the sort of thing that you are into, I hope you find my the material that I channel helpful. I also have developed uh, free transformational tools to help you do just that. They cost you not a penny. The only requirement for you is to invest your own time, energy, and effort into putting into these tools, to use these tools, so that you can reap benefits from using these tools. Uh, they are down below, you click on the link, and you will be taken directly to a site, and you can download your links absolutely free of charge to you. And um, the moment you sign up for that, you also will be signed up for my weekly messages that will be coming to your inbox. You will not find them anywhere else. So those are over and above of what I produce on YouTube and other platforms. So if you're interested, it's essentially subscribing to my newsletter. Um, if you do that, if you would like to receive more of higher level information in your inbox, that's only going to be available to you as a subscriber. Uh, make sure that you put um, info at Joanna the Healer email address uh, into your favorites or into your contacts. Otherwise, it will be filters as, filtered as spam, likely. So you will not necessarily get it, uh, get to see it. Thank you so much. Again, if you find this helpful, click like, subscribe, share it with a friend or two, with a friend or two who you feel might use this information may find this information helpful. And at the end of the day, I truly believe that when we all in when we all begin to embody our inherent true power, not the ego power that says I am more than you. No, our inherent true power, the world will become a better place. And I am all for that. For those of you who are um, regular subscribers. Thank you so much for being here. 
as you know, every once in a while, the format changes. I just learn to go with the flow. Today is going to be a little bit different. I will likely not be doing cards, which is what I tend to do on a regular basis. But as I'm changing, I feel the way information wants to come through me and the level of depth that it wants me to go into is getting deeper and deeper. So today we're going to talk about five things that hold you back. And I, for one, would rather know what holds me back because if I know, if I am aware of what holds me back, then having awareness allows me to change it. And my work is all about helping people become more aware so they can tap into more of their true selves. And my background, as many of you will know, is in uh, clinical hypnotherapy. Uh, and from that understanding, uh, we know that over 90%, probably even more, but over 90% of everything that we do, say, feel, how we behave, what we believe, comes from our unconscious or unconsciously, unconsciously stored information. Information that makes us who we are, which is responsible for creating our identity or our ego. And the more we tap into this unconscious awareness and bring it more into our consciousness, then we at least have a chance to do something about the types of information that is limiting us, or to say it more accurately, how we limit ourselves. And we limit ourselves all the time, mostly without even knowing it. And that's because majority of those limitations are unconsciously driven. So my job and actually my passion, my absolute passion, is to help people like you, most likely since you are watching this, to become more consciously driven, to become more consciously aware, to become more conscious of how life is created or how we can create life more consciously because at the end of the day, we create life every day, every nanosecond that we breathe, most of it is unconscious. So if you are not new to this type of information, you probably have some idea about the law of attraction and the simplest way to put law of attraction in a sentence is that you attract what you believe. Well, there is various ways of dissecting that statement. One is, for example, why would I attract a unhealthy relationship? That's not what I believe healthy is. Well, with this specific example, if you are someone who keeps attracting unhealthy relationships, then that means that there is some part of you subconsciously driven that understands a relationship to be in a way that you are experiencing it. In other words, you consciously know that an unhealthy relationship is not what a relationship should be. But you may have experienced growing up a lot of unhealthy relationships. And to your psyche, to your own inner understanding, that was your idea of a relationship. And that information has been unconsciously stored. So then you go on, create your life and attract to you what you are most familiar with, i.e. an unhealthy relationship. And you're not doing this because you want an unhealthy relationship. You are simply being drawn to what is most known to you 
from your past experiences. I tend to not talk about, about past lives too much because yes, past lives affect us a lot. But in my work, especially having done hundreds and hundreds of past life regressions, it has become very clear to me that if we are challenged with something in this life, even though it may have a connection to a past life, and it usually does, it has to be triggered and brought into life in this lifetime. So a set, set or sets of circumstances have to come into play in order to activate, if you will, a certain pattern. And that happens in this lifetime, nine times out of ten. So in order to let go of old patterns, we don't really have to go into past lives. And I'm actually not sure why I am mentioning past lives, but perhaps some of you are very interested uh, and that's absolutely beautiful. Uh, perhaps you're trying to understand yourself by visiting past lives. But what I'm saying here is that in order to resolve some of your quote unquote karma, you don't have to go searching into past lives. You may not even believe that such a thing exists. All you have to do is understand your own human behavior that is based on how you experienced your life in this physical incarnation. From the moment you were conceived and being in your mom's belly, and then being born and having a physical existence and having experienced a physical existence in your human form. So I have a feeling that there are some of you, maybe just one person, who is set on or keen on visiting past lives, believing that a past life regression is going to solve or release some long-standing karma. Though it may shed light and open your eyes as to why you are experiencing your current challenges, the change or release of karma really lies in your hands. Because karma is really nothing more than an understanding of yourself or understanding of life and yourself in it from a certain perspective. And this is mostly subconsciously driven. So like I mentioned, my work is always working on the, with the unconscious mind, with the unconscious part of our human selves in order to reveal the blocks that are holding us back, that are limiting our potential. Because the moment something that is hidden and then it's revealed, it becomes something that's consciously there that's viewable, that's observable, that's perhaps even understood. And the moment we see something, the moment we see what we're dealing with, we then have a chance and a choice to change it. It is very, very difficult to change a dynamic within yourself where you have no conscious awareness of what the dynamic consists of. So that is where my work is, and that is what I love the most. It's my drug of choice. Having said that, if you would like to live your life to the fullest, if you would like to release yourself from your own emotional and karmic entrapments, Myself with my team would be absolutely honored to help you with that process. That information is down below. All you have to do is just book a session with me and then we can go from there. But <clears throat> without further ado, let's go through the five things that may be holding you back. And though they are all, all connected in some way, shape or form, they are, there's a slight differentiation between all of them. So let's start with number one. One of the things that's holding you back is lack of belief in self. 
What does that mean? Lack of belief in self, which simply means that we limit ourselves in terms of what we believe we can do, we can accomplish, we can achieve, we can become. But here's the interesting thing. You don't have complete lack of belief in self because you believe in something. Believing that you are not good enough is a belief. You don't lack that. What you lack is the positive expression of that belief. So lack of belief in self simply means that you lack a belief that enhances and enriches and expresses your life or helps express your life to the fullest of your potential. But you don't lack a belief in limited ways. So what is the antidote to that? Well, one of the first things you might want to do is you might want to recognize what you do believe about yourself that's limiting. If you believe that you are an insecure person, then that is your belief. You don't lack that belief. You have plenty of it. What you lack is the belief that you may that you are not an insecure person. So you attach yourself to being an insecure person. Now, of course, there's a whole bunch of layers to it, and it usually goes quite deep. But the point I'm trying to make is this. If you lack belief in self that allows you to live your life to the fullest, then first and foremost, you have to acknowledge that that's the case. Because without acknowledgement, we can't go further. It's a wall. We can't, we, can't, we can't do anything with that. So acknowledging that you have a perception about yourself that is limiting. And then ask yourself, why? Why do I hold this perception of myself? Where does it come from? Whose idea about me not being good enough, for example, have I opted into and bought as my own? And then it became part of my identity. And one of the useful thing, one of the some of the useful things that we can do, as I'm being shown that, thank you, is on a piece of paper, write down a list of limiting beliefs you hold about yourself. I'm not good enough. I'm not pretty enough. And by the way, those are all standards you hold about yourself. Because if you ask one person, they're going to say you're beautiful. You ask another person, they're going to say something very different. Beauty, as you know, is in the eye of the beholder. It makes no difference what someone else believes about you. What makes difference is what you believe about you. So going back to making a list. And starting with some very basics, what do I believe about myself that limits my potential? I'm not good enough. I'm not successful enough. I'm not smart enough. Um, I, um, I don't deserve this or that. Uh, my parents didn't raise me right. Um, I'm doomed for life. I am unlucky. You get the picture. So on one so, uh, on, in one column, write the limiting beliefs you have about yourself. And on the other side, write what is the opposite of your limiting belief. In other words, if you feel that you are not good enough, the opposite will be that you are good enough. And make these parallel um, versions of limited beliefs about yourself and the opposites of that limiting beliefs, which would be positive beliefs and ask yourself this question. What would it take for me to adopt these beliefs about myself, the positive ones, so that I can enhance my life and live my life to the fullest of my potential? So that's step number one. That in itself is a big homework. And by the way, if you guys ever entertain yourself, entertain the idea of doing these things, just I would love to hear from you down below and see what you come up with because some of the things, most of the things that we do, like I've mentioned earlier, are highly unconscious. We say these things to ourselves, but we're not really conscious we're saying them. 
And just because we're not conscious of something that is limiting doesn't mean that that limiting something is not limiting us in every single day of everything that we do. Because in fact, it does. So making this list makes things more visible. And what it also does when you have a list of limiting beliefs and then the opposite po positive beliefs. What it does, it allows you to look at positives or negatives and positives and see that there is a choice. That there is a choice in how you look at yourself and what you hold as your truth. What you believe about yourself is a choice. What you, I'm going to say it again. What you believe about yourself is a choice. How many times have you thought of that when you said to yourself that you are not good enough? Or that you are not lovable? Or that you are not deserving? You believing that you are not deserving is a choice. So the question then becomes, why on earth want, would you want to believe something that limits you? When that becomes conscious, something remarkable happens. You open the door almost as if to a new dimension a new possibility, a new level of awareness, which when you allow yourself to step through and into this new level of awareness, offers you an immense possibilities of experience you haven't even thought of in a positive way. Of course, this can also go in a negative way, but I am assuming that every single one of you watching this wants to feel less limited, want to experience life in less limited ways, want to experience more abundance, more love, more prosperity. I am assuming everyone wants more of that and not less. So that's point number one, which leads me to point number two. Self-limiting thoughts, which lead to self-limiting behaviors. For example, I am not feeling deserving of love, so I'm not going to bother trying and open myself up to experience love. Here's the thing. If you did open yourself up, despite of what you believe, and remember what you believe can be changed, you might surprise yourself. So number one, number two are very closely linked. Most of these things are because everything is connected. So self-limiting thoughts, which lead to self-limiting behaviors. So your, the guidance here, thank you, is again, take a piece of paper and write down a list of the self-limiting thoughts that you have about yourself and how each limiting thought limits your behavior. I am uh, not deserving of money, for example, or money is the root of all evil, or money is bad, or all relationships suck, or all men or all women or all partners are cheaters. Write it all down and then next, on the other side, write how that belief limits your behavior. For example, if one of your beliefs is that all relationships suck, you are going to go into relationships believing they suck and you're going to go into them with a closed heart. 
which will not only limit your expression within that relationship, it will limit you in terms of what you can get out of a relationship. And I'm not talking just a relationship that's romantic. I'm also talking about platonic relationships with friends and people. If you believe that most people are bad or most people are um, crooks or whatever variation of that, you are going to meet people with a closed heart. You will automatically be closed off to what they have to offer to you. And you will lose out on something potentially amazing. Now, that is not to say that there are people who aren't crooks or there are people who are not cheaters. Of course, it takes all kinds, but I would say that on the average, most people are good and they're doing the best they can. Most people don't go out of their way to hurt other people. If they end up hurting people, they do it because of their own pain, oftentimes, generally speaking. Okay. So number two is self-limiting thoughts, which lead to self-limiting behaviors. Write yourself a list of the thoughts that you are holding about yourself and how they limit how you live your life or how you li they limit your behaviors in terms of what you bring into your life, what you attract into your life. If you believe that you are undeserving of money because you have grown up with the notion that money is bad, why on earth would you want something bad in your life? And by the way, that's how the psyche works. And when you start opening up the unconscious level, you see how it's all connected. It's fascinating. It's absolutely fascinating. I'm going to digress a little bit. I remember when I was studying hypnotherapy, all those over 20 years ago, I believe now. And I started to see all the different layers. And I happened to... I suppose, have a gift of being able to see things more so than other people can. <clears throat> it's one of my gifts. That's why I do what I do. I'm a channeler. I can see things. Um, I remember thinking that it was fascinating. It was just, I couldn't get enough. And I still, to this day, you put me in a room with someone who talks about the unconscious and all the layers and how the mind works. You're not gonna, you're not gonna make me shut up for two days. <laughs> Where normally these days I kind of tend to sit back and listen because it's an area of not only interest, but it's an area of fascination and passion, but it makes sense why that would be since this is what I'm here on this earth to do or i believe that's what i'm here to do it's to help you understand yourself from a much deeper perspective from a much higher perspective to help you understand yourself from a certain level of depth where you can go wow i didn't know this about myself and now that i do i have the choice to change it Number three, again, linked to the first two, but slightly different. Limiting your desires. Example, limiting your desires around money, around love, etc., etc. Thoughts lead to actions. If your thought is that you can't have lots of money, for example, or a beautiful relationship or a healthy relationship or a stable relationship or a monogamous relationship that will limit your manifestation of having it okay so how do you limit your desires let's say you have a desire to have a lot of abundance but then you go no 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 I can't have that because that's not for me so that's linked to the lack of belief in self and also self-limiting thoughts. 
So again, you might want to take a piece of paper and ask yourself, how, how do I limit my own desires? First and foremost, in order to answer that question, you first have to understand and know and be conscious of what your desires are. So example, your desire is to travel the world. But your upbringing says, no, 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 you, you, you can't do that. That's not, there's no way you can make a living doing that. You have to go get a nine to five job. And then, you know, once a year for two weeks, if you can afford it, if you can afford it, go and travel the world. So your desire goes against what you have been taught, what you bought into. So naturally, your idea of traveling the world will be at least unconsciously squashed because your truth about you traveling the world is that it can't be done. Okay. Another example. Making a living outside of the standard norm of working nine to five. Many people, and as a matter of fact, it is happening more often now than any other time, any other time in history, uh, partly in big way thanks to the pandemic. It has given us the opportunities to do so more now than ever. So that's a positive. But you may have uh, this idea, this desire that you want to have your own hours. You want to make your, be your own boss. You want to make your own money. But you come from the understanding that no, nine to five is the way it is. And many people have that understanding. You can't make money by yourself. You're, not gonna, you're never gonna be able to make it. You're not good enough to be your own boss, whatever it is, whatever it is. So naturally, you will squash that idea, right? And what happens is, here's what happens from the universe's point of view. The universe looks at you, and this is obviously a very, um, very simplified way of saying it, but it's just to make a point. The universe looks at you and says, hmm, okay, this person has a desire to travel the world and somehow making a living from traveling the world. And the universe sees that very clearly. However, what the universe also sees is what your beliefs are about it. And from the manifestation point of view, the universe cannot give you what you desire because what the universe can only give you based on what you believe. The universe can only help you attract based on your own vibration of what you believe about the thing that you desire. So if you desire to travel the world and make a lot of money or just make a living traveling the world, but your internal dialogue, usually unconscious, says, no, I have to work nine to five. You're never going to make money. You're never going to make a living doing this or doing it this way, that's crazy, people don't do that, it's responsible, whatever, whatever, whatever. Although the universe sees your desire and it has gazillion options to hand you a desire in a certain form that would be desirable to you, it can't really do that because it has to conform to your vibration and what you believe in. And this is how we limit our own manifestations of what we desire. So the question then is, what is, that you des what is it that you desire? And what are you deeply held thoughts and beliefs about what you desire? And that will ultimately either enhance or limit your manifestation of it. Now, here's the thing. I'm not talking about the conscious beliefs that you say, I believe, I believe, I believe. No, that is, that is 
surface. That is what your ego says. That is what you want to believe. There's a whole plethora of deeply hidden unconscious beliefs that really tell you the truth of what you believe about your desires. In order for you to manifest that, you have to look at those deeply held, deeply unconscious or subconscious beliefs. One way to bring out these beliefs into the surface is to look at the life you are experiencing. Look at the experiences you are having in your life. Let's take the experience of money, because everybody understands money. We all understand the notion of money. If you are someone who has always struggled with money or is struggling with money, then there must be a concept you hold about money and struggle. Okay? Because your manifestation of struggle around money is tightly linked to your beliefs about it. So if you don't, what I'm trying to say is if you don't know what your deeply held beliefs are, all you have to do is add your manifestation. So with money, if you are constantly struggling with money and money has been a struggle for you, then you can pretty much bet 99.9999999999999999% that your beliefs about money are limited or your beliefs about money are very much limiting you in terms of your manifestation of abundance of money. Do you know how I know that? Number one, I've seen it a thousand times. Number two, it's been my struggle. I've talked about this, I believe, on more than one occasion. I grew up in an environment where the idea was that if someone had lots of money, you have to be a crook, you had to st steal it from somebody. You were uh, some other f lower form of humanity. So naturally, that is the message I got about money. When I realized why I was struggling with money, it made perfect sense. Of course, I was struggling with money. I didn't want to be a bad person. I didn't want to be a crook because that was, that was my connection to money. So I had to do a lot of unwinding. I had to do a lot of inner work. I had to do a lot of observation of my actions, which led to my beliefs, to which lead to my behaviors. And then eventually I realized, oh shit. I have a lot of issues around money. One of them is massive resentment. I had a lot of resentment towards money because I wanted it, but I couldn't have it. I was resentful. I remember when I first saw that, when they, I was in a parking lot going to the gym or coming from the gym, one of the two, and a beautiful car drove by, I think it was a BMW. And my guide at the time said, Notice how you feel right in this moment as you're looking at the car. And I kind of startled me and I, I, so I tuned into how I was feeling and I went, oh, oh my God, I am resenting the person driving this car. And I thought, what's going on? And what I got was, this is your feelings towards abundance because the beautiful car to me represented a form of abundance. And it dawned on me, oh my God, I'm never gonna be able to attract true abundance if I have resentment towards it and anger towards it. All I'm gonna do is I'm always going to push it away. I'll never forget that moment. It was one of those moments that will stick with me for the rest of my life because it was defining moment in terms of my realization of my truth around money. Fear of it, resentment around it, anger towards it. Resentment towards people who drove nice cars. 
And it was so unconscious all of this time, most of my adult life, that I didn't even realize that I was doing it. It was that one time when my guide said, notice how you feel in that moment. I went, oh, but I had to pay attention. I had to be honest with myself. So one of the things that is coming up right now is in order to know your truth, one of the things we really have to be is honest with ourselves. And we lie to ourselves all the time. We sell ourselves a whole bunch of shit all the time. I do it. You do it. The difference may be that I do it more consciously. Most people do it unconsciously. But to really know the truth, we have to be honest. We have, and sometimes, Honesty hurts. It hurts to see the real truth. So I would invite you to ask yourself, how do you limit your desires? And what truths, deep truths do you hold about the desires that you are desiring or the things in your life that you are desiring? Because if you're desiring it, it means you don't have it yet. And the universe is abundant in everything. Now, I know the human form will absolutely disagree. The ego will find gazillion reasons to show why that is not the case. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking higher perspective. The ego can only argue the manifested form. The universe is abundant in the unmanifested form and it's everywhere. It's all around us. I remember having that awareness as well, which I will go into into some other time. So if you are limiting your, if you are desiring something, it means you don't have it yet. And since the universe is abundant in whatever it is and everything that is, then that stands to reason that it's out there somewhere ready to be attracted by you into your life. So if it's not happening yet, the question then is, what stands in the way? What stands in the way of you attracting your desires? your beliefs about you, your thoughts about what you desire, your beliefs in self, all of these things play a key role in your manifestation process. So maybe spend a moment or two and ask yourself, what are my deeply held truths about the things that I desire? And be really honest about it. There is no point lying to yourself because we lie to ourselves now all the time anyway and we don't do it maliciously we obviously don't do it consciously but we do we tell ourselves that we are not capable we tell ourselves that we are not powerful we tell ourselves that we are not deserving none of these things are true they're just illusions that we bought into and made it our own and made it our truth But are they real? I'm not saying they don't feel real to you, but are they real? There's a saying that came to me a while ago, and I thought it was quite humorous. And I'm going to be blunt as I say it. Just because you feel like shit doesn't mean you are shit. Right? If you feel like poop, does that make you poop? Clearly not. Right? So just because you feel a certain way doesn't make you so. You may feel undeserving. You may have your reasons as to why. Let's look at those reasons. But does it make it the truth? No. The truth is you are a powerful being. You manifest life and your experiences 24 seven, whether you like to believe it or not, whether you are conscious of it or not, whether you're aware of it or not, 
Everything is energy. You attract to you what you vibrate the closest with. So from that perspective, you are a potential of manifesting. You are a potential manifester of pretty much anything. How quickly and how closely that manifestation comes into your own human experience is very much rooted in what you believe and how you feel about it. And oftentimes those two go hand in hand. So maybe spend the next little while asking yourself, what are my truths? What are my truths? What deep truths do I hold about the things that I am desiring? Like the example I gave you about my me and manifestation of abundance, money in particular, and, and nice things in life. And then see what you get with that. And by the way, the transformational tools that I've developed are geared towards helping you become conscious of all these things. There's an inner child uh, meditation, inner child healing that will help you discover a lot about what you hold dear in terms of your beliefs and your truths. Okay, number four. Awareness of self or lack of it. Again, it's tied to all the three points before. Example, not understanding your deeper projections, not having the awareness of the deeper self or the I, and not understanding how you, how you're, how you, how you work on a deeper spiritual, emotional, psychological, emotional level. Emotion already said. And how that affects your physicality. So as I mentioned at the very beginning, almost everything that we do, far over 90%, is driven by our, our unconscious part of who we are. And the more awareness we have into our unconscious beliefs, unconscious selves, the more we can bring that into our consciousness. What happens when we become more conscious, we automatically become more aware. With more awareness, we begin to see more choices that were previously not available to us. But it wasn't that there, it's not that they were not available to us, it's that we didn't see them or we didn't see them. We were not able to see these choices as a, as a result of our lack of awareness. So, one of the ways that you can become more aware is understanding yourself based on how you feel about yourself. For example, you might be you might be someone, and this is just an example, who projects a very confident person into the world. But that may just be a facade. That just may be something you want people to see about you for whatever reason it generally has to do with fear of judgment okay and as a matter of fact the more fear of judgment we have from other people the more judgmental we are about ourselves that's just a side note so if you are someone again an example who is projecting a very secure purse secure person secure facade but deep inside how you feel about yourself does not match what you are wanting people to see then you have to ask yourself this question where is the dissonance between how i feel and what i'm trying to project what I'm trying to make people see me as that is very different than what I'm feeling. Now, that is not to say that if you are feeling not confident that you shouldn't try to project confidence and 
go out into the world and try to be as confident as you can. Because eventually, the more you do that, the more you will start to believe that. But what I'm saying is something a little bit more fundamentally deeper. If you are projecting something to the world that you are not, and that is very different than what you are feeling inside, then what you have is what I call a classic conflict. You have two conflicting sides, one that feels a certain way, which is undeniable, and one that wants to project something very different. And what happens when we try to project something very different than who we are, we often end up showing up as inauthentic. And generally, you probably already know, you've seen this before, I'm sure, you can probably spot an authentic person. Generally, these people are not afraid to tell you how they feel about themselves, even though it may be something that is limiting them. They're not afraid to say it. They're not afraid to say, look, this is how I feel. I don't like how I feel about myself. I know it limits me. I know it doesn't allow me to live my potential, but this is the truth. And these types of individuals are not afraid to make themselves vulnerable. They're not afraid to say, I am a human being, just like everyone else, with the hurt and the pain and the limiting beliefs and the sadness and all the other things that we are all experiences, experiencing in our human condition. And these people are generally not afraid to show it and say it. That's not to say that they make it a focal point because that goes into another level, to another category, which is, oh, feel bad for me. No, that's, that's, that's something different. But you get the picture. So the question you might want to ask yourself is this. Do I show up in my world as an authentic person? And what I'm going to say is this, please don't ask this question as if you are judging yourself or as if you are criticizing yourself. Ask this question with an open heart towards you so that you can know, so that you can be aware of your real truth. And if your real truth is that you are showing up in a way that is not authentic, again, don't judge yourself. Ask the question, why? Generally, we don't show up as an authentic person because we are trying to hide something. Why? To prevent ourselves from being hurt. So discovering those aspects about yourself becomes very important because those are the key ingredients that are contributing to you limiting yourself and your potential and what you can experience in life to the fullest. Last but not least, number five. Not understanding that I or your identity can be changed Perhaps not entirely, but to a great degree, enough to make a significant difference in your experience of life and the quality of it. Like I said at the very beginning, your identity is made up of a whole bunch of concepts you hold dear to you and you deem them as your truth. Whether they're real or not, it doesn't matter. If they're real to you, they're real to you. All of that forms the I, the identity. Okay? 
And your identity or our identity forms at a very young age. It forms in our formative age and begins to start forming when we are in the womb. And we are affected by our mother's energy, her environment's energy, because we're all energy, so we absorb that, okay? So our identity begins to shape at a very early stage of when we are conceived. And of course, there's the genetic predispositions and certain uh, things we get from mom and dad, yes. But those are all more fluid. There's very few things that are set in stone. I mean, yes, we are born <clears throat> with certain genetics, but now we're finding out that even genetics can be slightly modified and altered with the power of our thought. So there are very few things that are set in stone. There are some, but there are few, relative, relatively few. Um, one of them is you're born to a certain family. You are born a, a male or female. You may not feel like a male or female, but you are born with a certain body. And then of course you can do modifications and all, all that sort of wonderful stuff. But those are the kind of things that are the pillars. You're born with certain skin, you're born with a certain height, determined height, or you, you, your genetics determine your height that you will reach, potential reach, have potential of reaching. Your eye color. And yes, all of these things can be modified, but I'm talking from, you know, the pillars, right? What I'm saying here is your identity can be changed. But in order for your identity to change, you first have to become conscious of how you identify yourself. Because if you are unconscious of how you identify yourself, there's no way that you're going to be able to consciously change that. And how you identify yourself, hear this, how you identify yourself is your choice. How you identify yourself is a choice that belongs to you. So if you identify yourself as an unworthy person, You have made that distinction about yourself as a result of your experiences, yes. And you have come to this conclusion that you must be an unworthy person or somebody said to you, um, you're an unworthy person or the way your relationship, your experience relationship made you feel like you're unworthy. Yes, 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 yes. But your idea of being an unworthy person can be changed. There is nothing unworthy about you. You are part of all that exists. The entire consciousness is made up of gazillions you and I's. Entire consciousness is made up of all our individual consciousnesses. You are part of all that exists. How on earth can you be unworthy? You are also all powerful. No, I understand that your ego doesn't believe that. I understand that your identity says, no, I'm not. I understand that. But again, that is how you identify yourself. It doesn't matter if it's true or not true. If it's true to you, it defines your world. So how you identify yourself 
will determine the type of life you live. Whether you want to believe it or not. And the key to all of what I have described, all of the five things that hold you back, is self-reflection. You cannot have a greater sense of awareness without self-reflection, without going within, without tuning in, without being conscious and honest about how you feel We cannot have a greater sense of I without first understanding how we limit ourselves in terms of how we define our I in the current time, in the current present moment. What defines your I or yourself or your identity? Well, I could probably sit here for the next three days trying to list off all the things, but let's just list off the basic. Do you feel you are a worthy person? Do you believe that you are a lovable person? Do you believe that you are a good person? Do you believe that you are a generous person? Do you believe that you are a loving person? Do you believe that you are a powerful person? And the list goes on and on and on. But if the answer is no, then the next question is, why not? Whose idea did you buy, did you buy into that you are not those things? And those are the basis of what forms our ego, or some of the basis that forms our ego. So that is what I have for you today. Uh, this video is longer than I thought it was going to be, so that's interesting. Um, let me know if you enjoyed this. Again, if you would like to have a higher understanding, a greater understanding, a more expanded view of who you really are so that you can embody more of your true powerful self in order to experience your life to the fullest of your potential, then those links down below, the free transformational tools will help you start on that journey right now. Of course, if you would like to, well, if you would like me to help you with your stuckness or with your undeservingness or with whatever it is that you limit yourself, I would be absolutely honored. And last but not least, uh, do let me know down in the comments how this information resonates with you and perhaps what you thought was interesting that you haven't thought of before and some of the exercises that were mentioned at the very beginning of this video and what they brought in for you in terms of awareness. Thank you so much. Um, the next video will be probably a week or week and a half from now. I'm just doing a bit of traveling and when I travel my head space is not there to do these videos. I have my own space for that. Um, but I look forward to hearing from you and to seeing your comments and most of all thank you so much for being here. Um, may every single one of you be blessed, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.